I love Thomas. Every year, it seems I grow in appreciation of this Sunday after Easter when his life and legacy regularly find expression. Right after Holy Week and the astonishing resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, it's as though we ask a question as people of God, now what? And the church in its tradition gives us this story, this gospel. Ironically, this Sunday, you know, is often called Low Sunday. I don't buy it. As I've grown an appreciation of Thomas, I've grown less an appreciation of that term. And here is why I believe Thomas is so important to us to appear on the Sunday after Easter to say to the church as soon as possible that nothing about Easter is over. Easter has not come and gone. Easter Sunday is an introduction. It is a launch. And the trajectory of Christ rising from the dead is just beginning. The story of Thomas is the perfect complement to the debut of resurrection. And the gospel today with Thomas central to it is for those of us who doubt occasionally or wonder or otherwise at times struggle with what Easter means. I come to use the word faith as a verb. Faithing, which is inclusive occasionally along with belief by the grace of God for wonder and even at times a kind of skeptical doubt that creeps in because it is such an astonishing story that we embrace and is at the heart of us, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thomas is in all of us. He is for all of us and many more to come. His story is the story of humanity. So great a purpose has Thomas in the church. His humanity becomes one of the first of the body of Christ among his peers to acknowledge the divinity and lordship of the risen Christ. His journey is our path to deepest faith. Before this story, Thomas appears in the Gospel of John two times. And in each instance, Thomas shows remarkable character. But it is the story today that he makes his finest contribution to evangelism, that task of yours and mine. The first time we find Thomas speaking is in the 11th chapter of John when Jesus and the disciples receive word that Lazarus, Jesus' friend, lies dying. Lazarus, with his sisters Mary and Martha, live in Bethany in Judea, where previously Jesus has drawn the ire of religious authorities. To go to Bethany puts Jesus in grave danger as the plot against him is already hatched. When Jesus says, let us go to Judea again, the disciples fearing for their lives say, Rabbi, the, they were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Only Thomas says, let us also go, that we may die with him. Ever loyal Thomas shows his great courage. 
And we can be sure Jesus takes notice. The next time Thomas appears in the fourth gospel is in the passage that we have come to know as the farewell discourse of Jesus. In the 14th chapter, Jesus consoles the disciples with these familiar words, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. It is a favorite scene in the Bible, mine, probably yours. It is this passage that is so very often read at Christian burials. So now imagine the disciples listening to Jesus, their master implying how they all understand what he just said to them. Indeed, he affirms, and my way is known to you. Only Thomas, only Thomas breaks the silence to say, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And of course, Jesus shows them himself, the way, the truth, and the life. But the cat is out of the bag that only Thomas will openly say aloud what they all share, which is a lack of understanding of their rabbi, especially about his death and resurrection. Courage born of honesty. There's no evidence per se, but I have to imagine Jesus smiles with a twinkle in his eye when Thomas goes to the head of the class as an example of such humble candor. And today, we come to the upper room for a second time. At first, Thomas, so deeply loyal, courageous, brilliantly truthful, Thomas is not among the others. And here we see Thomas's momentous contribution. He is a realist. In this third millennium, since the unfolding of the gospel of Jesus Christ, his birth, his death, his rising from the dead, our generation is ever so familiar with the idea of resurrection. We've heard it all our lives. We are used to it, are we not? But as Mary first tells the others of her encounter with Christ, and they subsequently tell Thomas, we have seen the Lord. Thomas, at best, is skeptical. He cannot believe them because he is so sure of what happened on the Friday before when the life went out of his master on the cross. With surety, when Jesus died, a part of Thomas died too. When we hear the story of Christ's passion, we pause at the mention of Jesus as he breathes his last. It is a moment to take in later how the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the first among many, is resurrection from the dead. Jesus is not revivified as is Lazarus. Jesus is raised from the dead. And on this second Sunday of Easter, Thomas comes alive among us. And with him, we share in his joy and the reclamation of his life in relation to Jesus, his Lord, in kinship with God. And so we sing, the strife is o'er, the battle done.
The victory of life is won. The song of triumph has begun. Alleluia. No low Sunday is this after Easter. Thomas is raised from his despair with a firm grasp of reality, impervious to all influence but the presence of Christ who appears before him, certainly. The message of the church today embodied in Thomas is that Easter is not ensconced in the past. It does not go again under the power of death as though it has its annual outing. And now we get on with life as we know it. Earthly life according to the rubrics of death, no more. It is for Thomas in his proclamation, my Lord and my God, he does so as does a cantor lead a great chorus of angels and archangels giving voice to every creature who ever forever sing this song. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might. When we gather here as we are now, we say, lift up your hearts to remind us this is the reality of our life. Resurrection life now in kinship with your Lord and my Lord, your God and my God. Thomas is you. Thomas is me. I love Thomas. Love him too as we love others as ourselves. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.